Cinque must have been an amazing inspiration, a marvelous hero, to have escaped once from enslavement via a mutiny using a boat that he didn't know anything about on an ocean he didn't know very much about, and then that he could escape, essentially, from the American legal process that had enslaved African Americans, that's a miracle. There is no doubt that the outcome would have been different had Cinque attempted a revolt aboard a fully manned transatlantic slave ship. Very few captives ever dared mutiny once a ship left Africa on the voyage known as the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage was the route followed by the slave ships across the Atlantic. Most ships transported Africans from the coast of West Africa to Brazil or the West Indies. Only about 5% of their human cargo came to the United States. A typical slave ship could travel to the Middle Passage in 5 to 12 weeks. For the traders, the formula was simple cramming as many Africans as possible into a ship and then delivering them to the market alive equaled the greatest possible profit. But that was also the traders' dilemma. How could they make sure that all the Africans would remain alive? The mortality was high. 15-20% was not uncommon for people to die on these passages. Some entrepreneurs thought the more we cram aboard the ship, the more we're going to have to walk off on the other end. They were the tight packers. Others said, if you treat these people a little bit better, they're more likely to live. We're going to cram fewer into a ship. They were the loose packers. Slaves shackled together below decks often had no more than about 24 inches with very little room and often lying in their own filth because of the way that they were shackled together. Dr. Alexander Falconbridge practiced onboard British slave ships. In 1788, he wrote about becoming physically ill after spending only 15 minutes in a slaver's hold. When I had to enter the slave deck, I was forced to crawl over the slaves. The Negroes are frequently packed so close together that they have not so much room as a man in his coffin. I was so overcome with the heat, dense and foul air, that I nearly fainted. It was only with assistance I could get on deck. Hundreds of Africans were forced to use three or four large buckets as toilets. Our wretched situation was aggravated by the filth of the necessary tubs into which the children often fell and almost suffocated. Olauda Equiano. The intense body heat created a thick, wet steam that hung in the air like fog. The stench often preceded them into port. Despite the despicable conditions, these vessels of cruelty were called by the gentlest of names. The names that captains and merchants gave to their slave ships make us understand a little bit about their perception of slavery. Most of us would be aghast at the thought of naming a slave ship for our mother or our wife, the Betsy, the Polly, the Charming Sally. Most of us would think it was a cruel trick indeed to name a slave ship the Olive Branch or the Dove or the Liberty. The most ironic of all was an American slavery ship simply called Hope. 